Hello and welcome to X-Play's Little Big Planet special. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Morgan Webb and we are coming to you from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. And as you might have guessed, today's show is completely devoted to the PlayStation 3's revolutionary platformer. And in the next half hour, we are going to take you inside the world of Sack Boy or Sack Girl. It's a sack person. It's a sack thing. It's a sack. Person it's okay. Person it's, person it's, sack. It's, it's gender neutral. I promise. We'll travel to England, introduce you to the team at Media Molecule, and find out how a group of ragtag developers became the creators of one of the year's biggest titles. Plus, we'll dig into the nuts and bolts of Little Big Planet and show you how easy it is to create your own levels and miniature worlds. And we have got brand new exclusive footage of the game that you're actually not going to see anywhere else. And coming up in tonight's special, we'll reveal a very special surprise. We're going to cover every aspect from the game's unique look to the melodious sound design. X-Play is your ticket inside what could be one of the year's best and most original games. All right, to kick off the ceremonies, let's head across the pond and meet the brain trust behind the game and find out what it takes to bring a unique vision like this to life. Media Molecule is actually a surprisingly small company. Just under 30 employees toil in a studio above a toilet shop, making one of the most important PlayStation titles of all time. Co-founder Alex Evans told me the story of Little Big Planet's rise from high concept pitch to Keystone holiday title. It's challenging to try to you know somehow encapsulate Little Big Planet in, in a sentence. I mean, how did you go to Sony and like Phil Harrison and say, "Hey, we got this idea. Trust us." Yeah, I mean, it was it was literally that. So, um, what we we always try and do is have something playable, and we just said to Phil, like, we want to do creativity. We want to do this thing. I have no idea if there's anything to do with what the game's going to be, but it's fun. It's jamming. It's playing together. It's creating something. Now, let, let's start with GDC 2007. Mm. Um, that was definitely, you know, a coming out, you know, moment for, for, for you. It was completely wild. If you've ever been to GDC, um, uh, reviewers, of, it's like 5,000 people spread out before you, which, you know, is, to, to me, to, to me, that was like pretty mind-blowing. But then to watch the reaction, and then when I heard the crowd as we were going down the skateboard on the ramp, I was like, something's done right. I don't know what we did, but that was the moment when I was just like, okay, bring on the champagne, you know, that was great. <laughs> You really have been developing this game very much in the public eye. Obviously, there's a lot of expectation on this game. Sure, I mean, it's, it's been a double-edged sword. The, the pressure on the team is good, but I think it, for us, especially as a young studio, you know, we've got a lot of experienced guys here, but this is our chance in the limelight, and being able to almost get people's reactions has been such a driver for me personally as well. Little Big Planet is such a potentially huge game and there's so many different angles we could push on and we have all these different ideas in there. So one of the, the things that we've been doing since GDC is almost like focusing it in so that when you ultimately sit down with the Blu-ray, you actually just get a really fun experience. And your Little Big Planet experience starts right here on X-Play. Obviously, one of the more addictive aspects of Little Big Planet will be designing and sharing your own levels. But please, don't go about this hastily. We'd hate to see some innocent sack boys or sack girls get hurt by bad level design. To prevent this needless violence, we talked to the developers to get the basics down pat. When people get their hands on Little Big Planet, one of the first things they want to do is design their own level. And they're in luck. The game provides an incredibly detailed level editor. The awesome thing is we completely have avoided any programming. So anyone who doesn't program, it's not a problem. You know, literally anyone can use this stuff. We wanted to get a hands-on demonstration and learn the basics of design. Actually, even when you're creating something from scratch, you don't have to start with a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. We've actually given the player lots of templates. The first step is to go to your moon and choose the templates, items, and doodads that you want to use. This is like your workshop, if you like. Right. So you just have certain objects in certain places that you can then build out of. So in here, you've got access to various materials and objects and gadgets and exciting things like that. Placing the objects and items is a breeze thanks to an easy to understand control system. Mark demonstrated by creating a simple tree using basic shapes. So you're not stuck to the box form. Yep. This is just a very quick and direct way. So I'm sort of making like a simple little tree or something here. Then I can use what we call the poppet cursor. And I can pick that shape up and I'll use that to draw with. Oh. Players can also decorate with stickers and textures to completely change the look of their levels. Amateur designers can test the gameplay on the fly. I mean, the simplest thing I could do is just draw something like this, maybe. I can quickly go in, 
I'll test that. I think, OK, I want to make it maybe a little bit more dangerous than that. We'll set fire to it. Oh, my. <laughs> Fire isn't the only hazard Sackboy will face during his adventures. Players can add a wide variety of tactile obstacles to the mix. All the different materials have um, distinct physical properties. So polystyrene is incredibly light, for example. Um, rubber has a lot of grip and traction. Glass is very slippery. In order to become a better designer, creators need to experiment with all possible materials and items. You've got string, pistons, chains, all kinds of things. So you basically just create your own junkyard? Yep. Basically make lots of contraptions and creations. Once you get the hang of the basics, you're seconds away from creating levels. From there, the possibilities are almost endless. Prepare to surrender your remaining free time. The look of Little Big Planet is a huge part of what makes it such an attractive game. The levels are gorgeous and there's an endless amount of texture and pattern combos to make your sack boy or girl irresistible. So does Media Molecule operate some sort of whimsy factory or what? All right, to make sure they weren't using Oompa Loompas as slave labor, we went straight to the source. As soon as people laid eyes on Little Big Planet two years ago, they were instantly charmed by the adorable characters and eye-popping visuals. My mantra is like blur and add noise. Let's have depth of field, let's have motion blur, let's have all of these features which other games are using to great effect, like Killzone 2 has a lot of those same effects, for example. But wouldn't it be funny to take all of those features which you're used to seeing in a kind of grey uh, uh, metal environment and apply them to give a sense of micro scale? Everything in the game is completely charming, especially the main character, Sackboy. How did they come up with the quirky creation? We knew that we had to have effectively a blank canvas be very recognizable. And we also knew that we it would have to have a big head so that you can see these expressions no matter how zoomed out the camera is. The game is a high-tech playground of visual treats. How did they pull off the look? A huge part of that is the, the rendering technology that we're using. I think one of the big things in the engine is the motion blur, because it's done very well. It's done so well that you don't really notice it. But if it's turned off, it looks completely different. But the best part is that players can create a lot of the scenery themselves. For a demo of that process, we went to the game's art director. Now, the hardest challenge for us really was to think about how can we break down the awesome visuals to be achieved on a press of a button. So. Uh, one of the simplest ways that we, we thought about achieving that was the concept of having background, background environments that you set your scene in. The second thing was a massive heap of materials that they can build all their creations from. So as you can see, you can have like a very complex fabric and all you need to do is that you just draw your shape and we draw the texture for you. So. In no time at all, you can make very, very cool combinations. Third one, which is a beautiful one, is the stickers. And those stickers range from very bold colors, like just a paint splat like that, where you just stick it on the material, or a complete illustration. The sticker that kind of had the pattern you expect and to see on a giraffe, you just lay it all over. By combining a few buttons and feathers and things, you can make your creations as exotic and as beautiful as you want. So really, the only limitation is your taste. Your taste and imagination. Coming up on X-Play's Little Big Planet special, we'll show you all the tools and toys that will be at your disposal. The creative possibilities are endless. Then, we've seen the sights. Now we'll delve into the sounds. Be here to get the story behind the amazing sound design. Plus, you'll get some advanced level building tips straight from the people that made the game. All this and more. Stick around.
welcome back to X Play's Little Big Planet special. Now we've already seen the basic building blocks that go into a Little Big Planet level, but what tools and pieces do the pros use? Well, we sat down with the developers of the game to get the expert tips and tricks to level design. We've seen a ton of impressive tricks and designs in Little Big Planet already, but what's it going to take to move into the advanced realm of LBP design? I think a lot of a lot of what, what, what people do is they actually look at how something's made and then ditch it completely and go, you know what, that, that was the wrong way to do it. We have these big, like, monster trucks, and I was looking at the monster truck going, it's got a really nice kind of suspension, soft suspension feel to it, and I realized he'd built these little glass tubes which the suspension runners were, were running through, and, and once I'd got that whole idea of using glass as a way of like lowering the friction, I was off on one. I didn't care about his 4x4 monster truck. I wanted to build a whole load of other stuff with little glass tubes and stuff. Now I'm here with Mark, who you, you've been working at a very ambitious level that a lot of people are paying attention to. Oh, uh, yes. So you give us an indication of how big you can actually go with this. Yeah, stuff. I'm building this big, big kind of spooky level because um, I really want to play with the um, the silhouettes and the, the lighting in uh, Little Big Planet. This is one of the bosses for the, the level I'm doing, so this will be the final boss oh, encounter. Okay. So this is a big spider. The clue for this is when I was designing this level, I wanted uh, a lot of the bosses in games, you kind of, you press a button and, you know, something happens or you shoot a gun and you never have direct contact with it. Right. I thought, well, why not just pull his legs off? Oh. So what I've done is, is rigged it up so that I can just grab his legs and I can pull them off like that. <laughs> and uh, bits of blood that come out and, uh, and he shakes around a bit and you kind of you know, pull him out. And Yank off his last leg. last leg and then he just kind of oh, wobbles no. around a bit and then he kind of explodes. Do you mind if we take a look at sort of how you put this together? Sure, no problem. I'll just turn all the lights up. You can see everything oh, wow. in its glory. The great thing of, about the game is that we have this law where, as much as we can, we try and show how everything works within the game. So you were able to turn down the lights so that no one could see these switches, so it just looked a little more magical. Yeah. Well, it looks like that even though you're inspiring others, that you guys seem to be inspiring yourselves. Even though you have made this game, mm -hmm. Seem to still be fighting things. Oh, you still. Can do it with your own oh, still. I mean, that's the thing. The scope for like supporting the community is huge. Every day I play the levels, um, and sometimes two weeks go by I haven't played a level. I go back and play it again, and you're totally right. I'm re-inspired, and I'm like, oh, that's that's very cool. And I think user-created levels are just going to do that times well, times a million, I hope. So now it's up to you, the players, to show Media Molecule the full power of what they've created. We can't wait to see what you're coming up with. Gamers will think they're clever by recreating Super Mario Brothers World 1-1 in Little Big Planet. Trust me, you're not. Nope. See, there's this box, and you're not thinking outside of it. And on today's X list, we run down the top five levels we would like to see remade. <laughs> number five is Planet Zebes in Super Metroid, the first area where you get your morph ball. And at number four is the Air Man stage from Mega Man 2. There's nothing more fun than obscured views and watching your precious health fall to the earth. Coming in at number three is level two, one from Ghouls and Ghosts. To recreate this level in Little Big Planet, you would have to be just as sick and demented as the person who created it in the first place. Our number two pick is Donkey Kong. Sure, this might be a short level, but we want to see those flaming barrels come down with realistic physics. But our number one choice is the first level of Contra, the manliest man's game ever. Imagine it, Sackboy wearing a headband and blasting aliens with a spreader. Make it happen, people. Sure, Little Big Planet is nice to look at. It surpasses the term eye candy and heads straight into eye methamphetamine. But all that shine and flash don't mean much unless you've got some ear crack to go with it. Take a listen to the game's sound design. <laughs> the sound design in Little Big Planet is quite possibly the game's secret weapon. Virtually every action in the game can be accompanied by great audio that perfectly matches what you're doing. It's subtle, but it makes the game even more engaging. This is Kenny Young, and you're doing the audio on the game. Now, this is something that has not been covered too much, but right. you guys really do find this to be a very central element of making levels and stuff in Little Big Planet. Absolutely. If you really want to go to town, you can customize with music and sound effects. So if we just pop a little, a little block down, like so, and if we go into the tools back here, mm -hmm. we've got a whole page of audio objects. So let me put in... 
significant metal impact there. As you can tell, the audio in the game is just as customizable as the objects and scenery. You can set sounds to be triggered by proximity, or link them to switches, or even hide them if you don't want players to see. Let me just show you another level I've been working on the last couple of days, which is it's quite cool for me now that I've finished up working on all the sounds in the game, I just get to play with it. So yesterday I started building this little music sequencer, and I've written some instructions for what you've got to do here. Play, you grab this thing, uh -huh. and rewind, you grab that. So if I grab this, music starts playing. And these little blocks here that you're seeing, each of those has a sound object on it. And so the different colors are different drums. So green is the toms, black is the kick drum, blue is the snare. And we can rewind it, go back to the beginning of the track, and listen to it again. We can't wait to start making beautiful music of our own. All right, well, next play's little Big Planet special returns. We'll take a closer look at all of the objects you'll be messing with, as well as finally reveal a surprise that we've been sworn to secrecy about. Don't move. Plays the Little Big Planet special, a closer look inside the PlayStation 3's ambitious groundbreaking game. And now we've got a special surprise for you a brand new Sackboy costume that's never been seen before. This astronaut outfit will be available the day the game launches. But here's the catch this is the only week he'll be available. So don't wait if you want to get your hands on this exclusive outfit. Now, I know I might sound like Ron Popeil here, but there's more! As a special treat for X Play viewers, Media Molecule has given us 2,000 beta keys for Little Big Planet. If you want to get your hands on this game early, we can help. All you have to do is go to this website, littlebigplanet.g4tv.com. And yes, you heard me right. We have 2,000 keys that are up for grabs. Now, in Little Big Planet, your imagination will be unleashed and the world is a blank canvas. The possibilities are virtually endless. There are racing levels, movies, play, you know, Rube Goldberg devices. Anything your brain can imagine can be brought to life with the tools available at your disposal. I'm probably going to make something that kind of just looks like poop. Anyway, here are some of the things you can do in the game. Now that you've seen some of the basic things you can do with the level editor in Little Big Planet, you might be wondering just how creative you can get. The answer is somewhere in between video game designer and almighty deity. All you have to say is, let there be lighting. Uh, with the, the sort of preset backgrounds we have, there are also a lot of lighting options you have within them. If we simply go to our tools uh, section and go to the last page, the last page is actually our lighting global controls, we call it. So from the lighting, you can make it darker, Ooh. like nighttime, or lighter, make it more daytime. It's a little more friendly. A little more friendly. He's actually changed on this particular level some color correction, which is like something a little bit more advanced, but it's so simple to use. I mean, all it does is simply apply like black and white filter to your level to make it very film noir or sort of like heat, sort of hot sepia sort of tones. And of course, finally, like some fog color, so you can change like different colors. Have maybe a blue background. That spooky area, yeah. Now it's more like cold. Control of the entire world is at your fingertips, from the position of the sun to weather effects. You can select how much fog you want to bring in the scene, so you make it a bit more foggy. Uh, that's quite foggy. Right yeah, <laughs> it's sort of early morning. You can change the fog color as well. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like interior design, really. In your house, you don't go and build the curtain or build the floor, you choose it. Console artists rejoice. Besides the stickers and textures that we already know about, Plenty of tools have been built into the level editor. Why? Art for art's sake. It's just so you can make pretty looking looking things, basically. I mean, some of these are really funky. 
the different coloured glasses, for example, so you can make a stained glass window, maybe. If designing virtual Tiffany-inspired glassware isn't your cup of tea, there are plenty of ways to kill off your obedient sack boy. Get creative. Sure, poison gas will probably do the job, but you can get a lot fancier with your death traps. I don't know if you've been told about this yet, but we actually got these um, clever little switches, like right. the pink switches there. So this is actually a switch which controls the, the, the poisonous gas. So mm -hmm. when this switch is touching this trigger, right. the poisonous gas will then slide in and then kill the player and it's game over. With all these tools at your disposal, there's no excuse for third-rate bare-bone side-scrollers. Keep all these possibilities in mind and your level will be the envy of all the sack boys out there. That about wraps it up for X-Play's Little Big Planet special. Yes, a big thank you goes out to Sony and everyone at Media Molecule for letting us inside their world.